I got a problem. What's your problem? Miata's dead. It was smelling coolant, and the car was leaking coolant behind me, and I parked for lunch, came back after lunch, and noticed that, well, there was a huge puddle underneath it. Took it to a shop, hoping that I just forgot to hook some kind of coolant line up or something, and wherever it was leaking from was above the transmission behind the engine. And I don't know if we really showed it that much in the videos, but it is so tight back there. It just, it's just, it's annoying, because I probably put over a thousand miles on the car with the swap, and it was doing fine. Uh, and then it crapped out two hours from home. So this guy came and rescued me. That was a late night. We are working on the five-speed race car today. Um, trying to have a runner by the end of this one, dude? Uh, hopefully you're gonna have a roller and hopefully a runner. So we're gonna start by trying to find some bearings then we're gonna get to assembling our axle. So here are our old hubs and bearings. Here's the tricky thing. We have our new bearings from Go Power Sports and we can just rob these bearings out of these new hubs because the hubs are different heights and we don't have to worry about buying spacers. Um, the problem is one of the spindles is a larger diameter. It's like tapered. Uh, so we have one bearing that's larger that we don't have. So we're gonna knock it out, try to find a part number. It also sounds really bad. It feels bad too. Uh, we're gonna try to find a part number and see if we can't grab one at a local parts store so we don't have to run an hour down the road. All right, let's run to the store and see if we can uh, have some luck. Sounds good. Hey dude, uh, do you wanna take the Miata? Oh, I... uh... I'd love to take the Miata. I had a buddy who hooked us up with a bearing uh, this guy was $35 at one store and uh, very, very cheap at the store Ike went to. Ike's friend just hooked him up, dude. Just just plopped it in his hand. Anyway, so we have a bearing that's going to work as long as it doesn't get wet because it's not sealed. So when installing a bearing, you want to hammer on the outer surface, never on this center surface. Always the outer. Try it. One of the reasons I like this chassis is because it's very adjustable. Like the ride height here on the rear axle is adjustable. It has slotted holes for the bolts to go in. The higher you mount the bolts, the, let's see, the lower the go-kart's gonna be. This is probably gonna end up in the grass at some point, so I'm gonna mount it on its highest setting. Now we got a roller. Buttery smooth. Yeah, it is. So I'm over here trying to figure out the throttle situation. Uh, this engine didn't come with a throttle cable one we had on it wouldn't work and it was old and kind of mangy anyway here it is so discarding that um so this is a slide type carburetor right so when you pull on the throttle it pulls this thingy i don't know what it's called the slide i'm gonna call it up uh which lets more air in the needle it lets more fuel in because that's the bowl right there so, in order to attach a cable, you gotta thread your cable in through the top there, and then jam the spring into the slide kinda at the same time. It's a little bit of a mess here. In there, just like a so. Then you just stuff it in the carburetor and hope everything's fine. Oh boy, there we go. 
All right, there it is. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, buddy. So we got to make a run to the store uh, to grab some nuts for the carburetor because the engine didn't ship with nuts for the studs for the carburetor. Uh, some carriage bolts for the seat, fuel pump, welding wire, and a fuel line. You ready? Yeah, buddy. Pretty much everywhere came through for us tonight. We got our nuts, our M6 by one nuts. We got our welding wire. We got all kinds of switches. Well, we haven't actually checked yet, but the parts store had a good amount of, a good selection of wires and connectors for our little CDI box. That's our main concern with wiring because this did not come with a wiring harness and the wiring diagram we found for 200cc life in doesn't match what we have. Man. I had all the holes lined up, dude, with no problem. This is pretty tight in here, dude. Uh-huh. I was worried about that. Um, it's not terrible, but this is going to get warm. I, I it's going it. to get warm, but you'll just learn not to put your arm right up against it. So let me show you guys what we're doing for a fuel tank. We're going to be using this tank from the 196 off the Trailmaster. Um, really doesn't look that bad up there, especially after I cleaned it up. I'm um, going to need to drill some holes in my brand new expensive diamond plate, but it'll be fine. Going to use some angle iron, some flat bar, going to mount a fuel tank. So a few days have gone by since we saw you last. Our wiring harness showed up. That's the good news. The bad news is that it looks like it's gonna plug into everything except for our CDI. So we need to make a choice here. We need to either rig up and make it work with this CDI, which the concern is that the plugs might still fall out. Or we could just order another CDI and just have to wait a few more days before we can ride it. So we're gonna order a correct direct plug-in CDI for this engine. And I also need to order like a speedometer cable and brake cable and stuff like that. Why speedometer cable? For oh. my CT70. Oh, the CT70. Yeah. So I was working on mounting the fuel tank, Ike was working on wiring, and now that we have a wiring harness, that can happen. What are we doing with this guy, dude? Just sticking it under there? I figured it'd be a, uh, yeah, just like that and you kind of center it up good. I, I like the shape of that fuel tank. It just seems to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I was gonna warn you about that. Yep. But we got that right there. Yeah. I was thinking we're going to mount a plate here, but I, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. Uh, but I do want a plate here for the switches. It's like the exact size. What? Oh. Need a hammer? No, I need the impact driver. Oh. Turns out the wiring harness is not a direct bolt up at all. Direct plug in. Plug in, whatever, to our, uh, to the engine. So that sucks. Ike is being a trooper over here and he, you watch like, I don't know, 30 minutes worth of videos on it and you have like a diagram that doesn't really work. I mean, he's doing his best to piece it together. Uh, I guess something to learn is that just spend the extra money and get the engine that comes with the wiring harness. Oh well. Uh, anyway, I'm working on a brake pedal. Now I'm trying to copy the design of the factory um, 
throttle and brake pedals. Uh, I have this piece of rod right here. I put it in our pipe bender and I couldn't bend it anymore. It's just too thick. So I'm gonna put a slice in it, bend it a little bit more, weld it, and go from there. Uh-oh. We're good, maybe. Just need a little bit more. Uh-oh. Got some hairline fractures. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I need to weld a couple spots before I keep bending. I'm like so close, dude. So it's not perfect, but I think this third pedal turned out pretty good. What are you doing over here, man? I'm working on uh, making a spot for uh, for a battery to sit and I'm gonna put a piece of metal across the top of it and it's gonna be bolted in and... Okay, so you're gonna enclose this area with that? Probably, yeah. Cool. You ready? Yep. Here's that it'll be fine fix y'all have been missing out on for this build. <laughs> we got a hose clamp connecting. Temporary. The for linkage. Purposes only. The linkage to the uh, to the cable. It has this nifty threaded piece right here that we can use to secure it right there so it won't move. Did we there. mention it was for testing purposes only? Anyway, then I can run it up there, figure out how to mount it to the pedal. Look at that, we even have some adjustability in there too. All right, dude, I'm gonna do a, a test of the clutch. So if you press in on the clutch. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. It didn't do it, did it? No, it, uh, it slipped. Yeah, it slipped. Uh, the barrel or I'm the guessing the barrel not. Yeah, it looks like the barrel not, dude. All right, well, for one thing, look at that extreme angle that it's at. It's not pulling just forward, but it's pulling sideways. Yeah. That, you're losing half your pedal power doing that. I mean, I would weld something between here. Okay. And with a hole in it for this thing to pass through. Oh, that's a good idea. Anyway, and we need some more barrel nuts, so we're going to order some of those as well. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Check me out at Isaac. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, we got a rolling chassis. The engine's mounted. Uh, we have fuel working on the um, wiring here. We're coming along. Hopefully, next time, uh, we also ordered a CDI. So hopefully, next time, when we get all those things in, we're going to have a runner for you guys. I'm really hoping anyway. Oh, yeah. Also, a lot of you guys are really questioning the uh, decision to go with a foot clutch. I just want it to be like a stick shift car. I just think that would be cool. Uh, with a hand shifter and a foot clutch. I mean, it's not the shifter cart way, but this is not a shifter cart engine anyway. So, I mean, I, I don't really have anything else. Um, it may be more dangerous than having a hand clutch, but you know, that's a risk I'm, I'm personally willing to take. Yeah, and we're showing y'all what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> also, the diamond plate is really growing on me now that we have like kind of a more complete unit going here. Growing so much, we added some more. <laughs> yeah, added some more back there. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, yeah. Anyway, we will see you Wednesday because we're working on the CT70 again, putting a new carburetor, 
uh, or a better fitting carburetor on it or more better suited for the engine size. I'm gonna work on headlights or turn signals, brake light, all the things we need to do to get this thing licensed and insured so I can drive it down the road legally. And if people call the cops on me, I'll be like, you know? I got a tag. Yeah, I got a tag. Um, anyway, if, uh, if any of you guys have a CT70 for sale, I know a guy who wants one. Hit me up. Or hit it up. <laughs> Every time we've walked into the shop, Ike has immediately sat on it and gone, I need to get one. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching. We will see you Wednesday.